Trishti paid for an article using currency notes of denominations 1, 2, 5 and 10 using at least one note of each denomination. The total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes used was one more than the total number of 1 and 2 rupee notes used. What was the price of the article? So basically this is a question from data sufficiency where a question statement has been given followed by three statements. We got to figure out the right answer from the given options meaning which of these statements would be sufficient for us to solve the given question right so what does it say Shrishti paid an article paid for an article using currency notes of denominations 1 2 5 and 10 so there are four different denominations that Shrishti has right 1 2 5 and 10 using at least one note of each denomination she has used at least one note of each denomination so there is no denomination which was not used she had at least one note of 1 rupee, one note of 2 rupee, one note of 5 rupees and one note of 10 rupees. The total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes used was one more than the total number of 1 and 2 rupee notes used, right? Total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes used was one more than the total number of 1 and 2 rupee notes used. What was the price of the article? What was the price of the article? So basically we have to find out the price of this article. Look at the statements given to us. Statement 1, Shishti used a total of 13 currency notes. Statement 2, the price of the article was a multiple of 10. And statement 3, the price of the article was uh, a multiple of 20. Right? So, let's find out which of these statements can give us the answer. Right? First of all, understand the data given in the question very clearly. Right? The, the question statement. We have got four different denominations. Let us assume the number of 1 rupee notes is equal to 1. Right? number of 1 rupee notes is equal to A, sorry not 1, A. The number of 2 rupee notes is equal to B, the number of 5 rupee notes is C and the number of 10 rupee notes is D. So this is what we know, A, B, C, D, right? So A notes of 1 rupee, B notes of 2 rupee, C notes of 5 rupee and D notes of 10 rupees, okay? The other point that is given in the uh, question is statement itself is that the total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes what is the total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes c plus d was one more than the total number of 1 and 2 rupee notes so c plus d is equal to a plus b plus 1 right so from the, the the question statement we can also make out that c plus d c plus d is equal to a plus b plus 1 right total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes c plus d is one more than the number of 1 and 2 rupee notes, A plus B plus 1. So that's another point which is given in the question. And remember, whatever is given in the question is applicable for all the three statements. See, very, very important that when you're solving questions from data sufficiency, you got to follow a proper uh, flow. I mean, you should, you should verify only statement 1 first, then only statement 2, then only statement 3. If independently all the three statements fail to give the answer, then we will go for combinations. Right? Like for example, when you are looking at statement 2 here, you should not be considering the data given in statement 1. Similarly, when you are looking at statement 3, you should not be looking at data given in statement 1 and 2 or vice versa. But then whatever is given in the question is applicable for all the three statements. So the point that is given in the question is C plus D equals to A plus B plus 1. Where C and D are the number of 5 and 10 rupee notes and A and B are the number of 1 and 2 rupee notes. So C plus D is equal to A plus B plus 1. This is applicable for all the three questions or all the three statements. All right. Now let's first check the independent statements, right? Uh, independent statements. The number of, you know, again, I'm repeating this point. The total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes used was one more than the total number of, so total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes is C plus D was one more than total number of 1 and 2 rupee notes, right? Now look at statement 1 alone. Statement 1 says, Shrishti used a total of 13 currency notes. Shrishti used a total of 13 currency notes. How does this statement help you get the answer? We are supposed to find the price of the article. The question is, what is the price of the article? Can you get the price of the article using statement 1 alone? No, not possible. Can you get the price of the article using statement 1 alone? Not possible because statement 1 is only talking about total number of currency notes. Statement 1 says that A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 13. That's what statement 1 says. And if I use this point that is given in the question along with statement 1, what do we get? We get that, you know, basically you have to divide A plus A, B and C and D in such a way that total is 13 and C plus D is one more than A plus B. So I can say that A plus B equals to maybe 6 and C plus D equals to 7. This is what I can say. Again, I'm using this, this data. I mean, if I combine this data with this data, 
these two statements together will give us this result that a plus b should be 6 which means the number of 1 rupee and 2 rupee notes should be equal to 6 total number of 1 rupee and 2 rupee notes and the total number of uh, uh, 5 rupee and 10 rupee notes should be equal to 7 so one more than this right 7 is one more than 6 7 is one more than 6 and 6 plus 7 is 13 balanced but will this help us get the answer no because there are multiple possibilities see a is referring to what 1 rupee denomination B refers to what? 2 rupee denomination. C refers to 5 rupee denomination. And D refers to 10 rupee denomination. Now, we have many possibilities here of uh, the price of the article. Like, for example, if I have, you know, what are the, what, how can you break up uh, A and B? A plus B equal to 6 implies A can be 1, B can be 5. Uh, A can be 2, B can be 4. A can be 3, B can be 3. This can be 4, this can be 2, 5 and 1. It cannot be 0 and 6 or 6 and 0 because, see, using at least one at least one was given right so you cannot consider zero and six as a solution but one five two four three three four two and five one are all solutions meaning one one rupee note five two rupee notes two one rupee notes four two rupee notes three one rupee notes three two rupee notes based on that we'll get different sum here similarly based on you know for c plus d also there are multiple solutions again based on these solutions we'll get a different price like for example one into one plus five into two so 1 plus 10, 11, 11 rupees here and similarly 2 into 1 and 4 into 2. So 2 into 1 is 2, 4 into 2 is 8, eight 10 rupees here and so on. We will get different prices and here also we will get different. Like for, what are the solutions for C plus D equal to 7? It can be 1, 6, it can be 2, 5, it can be 3, 4, can be 4, 3, can be 5, 2, can be 6, 1. These are the solutions for C and D, right? C plus D equal to 7. So 1 and 6 means what? The number of 5 rupee notes is 1, number of 10 rupee notes is 6, number of 5 rupee notes here is 2, number of 10 rupee notes here is 5 and so on. So these are all the solutions, which means there are multiple possibilities. I mean, you understand? I mean, there are many, many possibilities here. Like, again, what is important is, it's not just this and this. You have to take per permutations, right? More permutations, like 1 and 5 can be taken with 1 and 6 or 2 and 5 or 3 and 4 or 4 and 3 or 5 and 2 or 6 and 1. Similarly, 2, 4 can be with 1, 6, 2, 4 can be with 2, 5, 1, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2 and 6, 1. Then this. Then this. You, you understand? Look at this mess. This whole mesh shows that number of solutions that we get. I mean, such a complex mess. So, 5 solutions here. And six solutions here. Five into six, 30. 30 different prices can be obtained. The price of the article, 30 different prices can be obtained. Just to give you an example, let us consider uh, one five with three four. So one five with three four means what? A equals to one, B equals to five, C equals to three, B equals to, D equals to four. So one five three four means one into one plus five into two plus three into five plus four into 10. You understand? 1, 5, 3, 4. If you take 1, 5, 3, 4. 1 into 1. 1 into 1 rupee. 5 into 2 rupees. 3 into 5 rupees. And 4 into 10 rupees. So this is 1 plus, you know, this is like 1. This is 10. This is 15. And this is 40. So 11 plus 15, 26 plus 40, uh, 66. So we get the price of the article as 66. But then there are a number of other prices possible. So will statement 1 alone give you the answer? No, statement 1 alone cannot give you the answer, ruled out. Now look at statement 2 alone. Remember, we have to follow that flow. That's what I told you, right? Only statement 1 has been verified so far. Now we are going to verify only statement 2. What is only statement 2? The price of the article was a multiple of 10. So what? Price of the article was a multiple of 10. There are hundreds of, I mean, again, don't consider anything in mind. Don't consider this 13 in mind. When you are looking at statement 2, only look at statement 2. And yes, of course, the data given in statement 1. Uh, data given in question 1, uh, question statement. So, statement 2 says the price of the article was a multiple of 10. Now, what are the multiples of 10? There are infinite multiples of 10. Yes or no? There are infinite multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 and so on, right? 1,020 is also a multiple of 10. 4,67,840 is also a multiple of 10. Of course, the one point that is given here is in the question that C plus D equals to A plus B plus 1. Which means the number of... Uh, total number of 5 and 10 rupee notes should be one more than total number of 1 and 2 rupee notes. But even then I think uh, multiple solutions can be obtained, right? Multiple solutions can be obtained. So clearly one in, uh, you know, two alone will not give you the answer. Yes or no? Can two alone give you the answer? No, two alone cannot give you the answer. Yes or 
right? Can two alone give you the answer? The price of the article was a multiple of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Mm. No, there can be multiple possibilities, right? See, the only data that we have is it was a multiple of 10, price is a multiple of 10, and then number of 5 and 10 rupee notes are one more than number of 1 and 2 rupee notes. Of course, I have to, you know, use this equation in such a way that it should also give you a multiple of 10. But I think multiple possibilities can arise there. Just, just try an example. I mean, I'm using statement 2 along with this point here. So, we should make sure that the number of currency notes are in this equation and it should be multiple of 10. So, 1 rupee notes and 2 rupee notes. See, I should take 1 rupee notes and 2 rupee notes in such a way that the sum should be a multiple of I mean, the sum should give me a value of 10, right? So, I'm just thinking, uh, I mean, I'm just doing a trial and error thing. I mean, I'm very clear that this will give you multiple solutions. I'm sure you are also sure that we can get multiple solutions, right? But just take an example. Like, for example, uh, for statement 2, let me use statement 2 in it, I mean, so that we don't, I'm doing statement 2 in blue color here. So, let's assume A is equal to 2, B is equal to 4. So because 2 into 1 is 2 rupees, 4 into 2 is 8 rupees. So 2 plus 4, 2 plus 8, 10 rupees. I mean, I want the multiple also to be 10, right? So I have to do it accordingly. And according to this, if A equals to 2 and B equals to 4, so A plus B has become 6, 2 plus 4, 6. That means C plus D should be 7. If C and D have to be 7, then again there are multiple. So this implies C plus D equals to 7. Again, C and D 7, I can take in multiple fashions, right? Are you able to follow? I have taken A equals to 2 and B equals to 4 randomly. But why have I taken 2 and 4? Because 2 into 1 rupees is 2 rupees, 4 into 2 rupees is 8 rupees and 2 rupees plus 8 rupees is 10 rupees. See, if you using the denominations of 1 and 2 rupees, if you don't get a multiple of 10, then it will become difficult. You should either get a multiple of 10 or a multiple of 5. Because you understand, there is also a 5 rupee note available, right? So even if it is adding up to 5 rupees, this one 5 rupee note can be added here to make it 10 rupees. Any number of 10 rupee notes will give you a multiple of 10 only. The whole idea is to make sure that 1, 2 and 5 are used in such a way that we get a sum of 10 or a multiple of 10. So this is one case. Now C plus D equals to 7, there are multiple ways of doing it. I can say, uh, you know, C equals to 2 and D equals to 5. Or I can take C equals to 4 and D equals to 3. I cannot take C equals to 3 because the moment I take C equals to 3, 3, 5 rupee notes, which will give you 15 rupees. It will not be ending in 10. See, this is already ending in 10. Here, if I take C equals to 3, I'll get 15 rupees, not ending in 10. And it will screw it up, right? I mean, that, pro and I mean, it will not satisfy the condition. Then we can also take C equals to 6 and D equals to 1. You know, C equals to 6 and D equals to 1. You understand? So, multiple solutions are this. C equals to 4, D equals to 3, or C equals to 6, and D equals to 1. So, what happens? 2 rupees into 1. 2, 4 rupees into 2, 8, 2 rupees into 5, 10, and 2, uh, 5, 10 rupees into 5, 15. See, this is giving a multiple of 10. Similarly, 2 rupees into 1, so 2 plus 8 only, this is always. Then this is 40 plus 30. Right, then this is again 2 plus 8, and this will give us 60 plus 10. So 10 rupees plus 10, 20 plus 50, 70 rupees. This will give me 10 plus 70, 80 rupees. This will give me 10 plus 60, 70 plus 10, 80 rupees. So see, multiple solutions are there, right? 70 can be done, 80 can be done. And again, we have taken only one sample. There can be more and more uh, cases there. You're able to follow. You're able to follow. There can be more and more cases. So basically, the point is statement 2 alone is not going to help us. Statement 2 alone will not give us the answer. We can get multiple answers. And if you look at statement 3 again, quite a similar explanation is applicable, right? The statement 3 says price of the article was a multiple of 20. The price of the article is a multiple of 20 means what? Again, the same thing can be done. Of course, we have to choose the values in such a way that we always get a multiple of 20, but we'll get multiple solutions. So this also is good. And, and remember, when you're using statement 3 also, you should use only statement 3. You should not use data given in 1 and 2. You should forget that there are 13 currency notes. Remember, why didn't we consider that there are 13 currency notes? Like if you actually look at it, uh, yeah, it is just a coincidence here that I've got 13 notes. I should not be doing this because don't misunderstand when we did this statement to analysis I did not keep in mind that a plus b plus c plus d should be 13 I think I should have chosen some other value this is just a coincidence pure coincidence that 2 plus 4 6 plus 7 is adding up to 13 
but you know actually we did not keep 13 in mind this 13 was not in our mind right we can we can do something else also like for example i should i should not actually not be doing this i can say is a equals to let's say uh, 4 and 4 means 4 rupees and this is 8 so 16 rupees and 4 rupees 20 rupees and then this will be uh, 4 and 8, 12 notes right so this will be 13 notes you understand now if you see again you have to change the values accordingly here this is not more in not applicable anymore but the point is for statement 2 also when i take a equals to 4 b equals to 8 c and d total 13 How, what are the total number of notes 25 notes so 25 notes can be considered because we are not worried about 13 currency notes we don't know that there are 13 currency notes when you're looking at statement 2 look only at statement 2 don't consider data given in statement 1 similarly the same process is applicable for statement 3 as well I mean, we don't have to do the whole calculation and analysis again, but statement 3 alone also will not help you, right? Statement 3 alone also will not help you. So, I think independently 1, 2 and 3 fail to give the answer. Now, even if you go for combination, what happens? Even if you go for combination, you will not be able to get the answer. Even if you go for combination, you will not be able to answer. Because what kind of combination will you do? You will combine statement 1 with statement 2. Let me show combinations again in a different color, right? You come, you combine statement 1 with 2 or maybe statement 1 with statement 3. Now, when you combine statement 1 with 2, what happens? Statement 1 says there are 13 currency notes. So, we have to again take the number of notes in such a way that there are 13 notes. So, go back to the previous solution that we had actually considered, right? 2 1 rupee notes, 4 2 rupee notes and then if it is 2 plus 4 6, this should be 7. And based on that 2 4 7 only, we got two different solutions, 70 rupees and 80 rupees. Remember? I am considering 1 and 2 together. I am considering 1 and 2 together. So, statement 1 said that there are 13 notes. Statement 2 says the price should be multiple of 10. When I try to do that, what do I get? 30 notes. How are the 30 notes distributed here? I have taken 2 notes of 1 rupee, 4 notes of 2 rupees and 7 notes of 5 and 10 rupees together. So, 2 plus 4 6, 6 plus 7 13. This condition is satisfied. Statement 1 is satisfied. Statement 2 says the price of the article should be multiple of 10. For that multiple of 10 only, we did all this drama earlier, right? You remember, we got two possible answers, 17, 80. 17, 80, 2 are possible answers. Right? Two answers are possible. Two answers are possible. Right? Even if I go for combination, it is not helping me get the answer. Similarly, even if you go for combination of 1 with... See, combination of 2 and 3 is anyway useless. 2 and 3 will not give you the answer at all because... 2 and 3, if you combine together, it makes no sense. Statement 2 says price of the article was a multiple of 10. Statement 3 says price of the article was a multiple of 20. So what? If the price of the article is a multiple of 20, automatically price of the article is also a multiple of 10. So 2 and 3 combination actually makes no sense. Right? This makes no sense at all because one statement says price of the article is a multiple of 10. The other statement says price of the article is a multiple of 20. See, if the price of the article is a multiple of 20, automatically it becomes a multiple of 10 as well. So we get nothing out of 2 and 3 together. Now, the only combination possible is use 1 and 3 together. But even if you use 1 and 3 and you do analysis, you'll find that more than 1 answers are possible. Right? Even if you do a combination of 1 and 3, you'll find that more than 1 answer is possible. So, overall, you know, both 1 and... I mean, now go by options. If you go by options, what happens? Can both 1 and 2 give you the answer? No. Can only 2 and 3 give you the answer? Only 2 and 3 makes no sense. We have already discussed. Both 1 and 2 does not give the answer. This is the verification. Only 2 and 3 makes no sense we all discuss. Any 2 of the 3, clearly no. Because when 1 and 2 cannot give the answer, how can you say any 2 of the 3? Only 2 and 3 can give you the answer? Achha, only 2 or only 3? Of course not. So I think if you go by options, it is much easier. Answer has to be option 4. Elimination. We are going for elimination. We have verified the combination of 1 and 2. We got two possible answers. 70 rupees and 80 rupees. 70 rupees and 80 rupees. Right? So both 1 and 2 together cannot give it. Here is the proof. Only 2 and 3 makes no sense, we have already discussed, so eliminated. Any 2 of the 3 is not correct at all because when 1 and 2 cannot give, how can we say any 2 of the 3 statements can give the answer? Not possible. Only 2 or only 3 anyway is eliminated early in the beginning itself, right? Only 2 or only 3 cannot give the answer. So the only option left is option 4, which is other than the given options. So your answer for this question will be option 4. None of these options are correct.